What are your guys' thoughts on, or what is that dialogue to be had about um, the idea of, of medicating during working hours, it, experiencing altered states during working hours? I think obviously it depends on the kind of work you're doing, but let's just say like, you know, office jobs, for example, where you're not operating heavy machinery or, or driving any, which is operating heavy machinery still. What are your guys' thoughts on that, that, that notion of getting high at work with medical purposes or for whatever? It's a multi-layered answer. So the first answer, uh, the first layer of it is um, you don't touch and point. It's not a thing about getting high. Sure. It will you could also be taking CBD that's not going to alter or be psychoactive. So that's a first thing. I think second thing is the type of job that you have. So office work uh, versus yes, driving machinery is completely do two different things. And employers can say no to the accommodation that employers need because it's uh, a too costly too. It just causes more uh, danger to the public or the employee or the other employees. So they can say no. And unfortunately, that is not possible in um, some occupations for obvious reasons. Um, but I can also have the argument the other way. So I always say that um, when we started focusing only on safety sensitive jobs, that this needs to be educated and everybody needs to know uh, what, what can happen. I think the other, argument is financial institution. So a teller who doesn't understand that, okay, I took an edible and then uh, right before my shift or my shift started in the evening, I took it um, earlier in the day. I'm just, I don't know, a teller adding a couple more zeros to my bank account would be great, but somebody taking away uh, zeros through your bank account and doing a uh, financial transaction, it could, cause an issue. So I don't think it's only that conversation is only needed in safety sensitive uh, industry. It's needed in all industries to really educate people how it works versus all the myths that were, have been out there for years. And, you know, that really connects to uh, a topic that is often not discussed, and that's the topic of impairment. So when we say impairment, uh, we have to really define what it means, not only by the definition of the term, but also in the, uh, in the legal sort of sense of it. So impairment is not being high only, not being drunk only, not necessarily being under painkillers or whatever else. It could also be that, you know, unfortunately, your dog got hit by a car and you're sober, but you're extremely distracted at work because you're so concerned. Your child is not doing well, or you know, there's an ailment in the family that you just got of where uh, you get some bad news about a mortgage, you're distracted. Impairment is that in its entirety. So it could be any of those things. So, you know, a bus driver who's got this bad news about a mortgage driving down the street, not paying attention and causing an accident will still be under the impairment definition um, as, as long as like as far as things are concerned. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,